Welcome to the power of faith and the ministry of David Hathaway. Please join David as he ministers today's word. Often I say to the Lord, teach me how to pray. I know Jesus is alive. I talked to him this morning. The reality of our relationship with Christ is not in repeating prayers and phrases. It's knowing him. I talk to him. He talks to me. In Luke chapter 11, when Jesus had finished praying, one of his disciples came to him and said, Lord, teach us how to pray. All my life, I've been seeking to understand the power of prayer, but real prayer that gets an answer. Anyone can pray. In Russia, just last year, one former army officer said to me, oh, I fought in the war under communism. People did not believe in God. They weren't allowed to believe in him. But when the bullets started whistling round their ears and they realized how close they were to death, they all cried out to this unknown God for help. In a crisis, even unbelievers will cry out and pray. It's easy to pray like this, but it's harder to have a relationship with God. All my Christian life, I've not only wanted to pray, I learned to pray as a child, but I wanted to know how to get an answer to prayer, how to find power with God, so that when I pray, God will answer. As a boy in school, every morning we had uh, an, an assembly when we sang a hymn, someone read from the Bible, and we would repeat the Lord's Prayer. But I couldn't say it with them. The boys around me were not praying from, the, from their hearts. The words meant nothing to them. They were talking to the air, not to God. They didn't know God. They even changed the words of the prayer to blasphemous ones. Lord, teach us how to pray. In answer, Jesus said, when you pray, say, Our Father who is in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. For many years after my school days, I could not say these words because to the boys at school, it was just meaningless repetition. But after many years, there came a time in my life when I understood what it meant. 34 years ago, I was arrested for taking Bibles behind the Iron Curtain and put in a communist prison. The sentence for bringing Bibles was five years. And because I continued to preach the gospel in the prison, that was another five years. I could have been there 10 years. I didn't want to spend 10 years of my life in prison in a foreign country. I desperately wanted to learn how to pray because I wanted to see a miracle happen. I didn't want to stay in the prison. I wanted to be free to do the work of God. Things were difficult in the prison in Czechoslovakia where I was. And in the first few months, it seemed as if God didn't answer any of my prayers. When I prayed for food, there was none. When I prayed that my wife would be able to come, she wasn't allowed a visa to visit me. It seemed that every prayer that I prayed, God said no. I began to despair. We had to get up at six every morning and sit on a wooden stool with nails in it for hours every day. It was torture. In the first six months, I wasn't allowed out of my cell. My food and my toilet were in the cell. I lost so much weight. When we were woken early, I would try to pray in those early hours before the guards would bring the mouldy black bread and foul-tasting drug-laced drink, which was our only breakfast. I remember that one morning when I'd been three months in that cell, I desperately cried out that I couldn't pray anymore. Because I said, oh God, every time I pray, you say no. When I want the food parcels my family are sending, or a visit from my wife, or for me to be found not guilty in the court and set free, always the answer is no. I don't know how to pray anymore. Everything I ask you for, it's no. I sat there not knowing what to do. Oh God, if you don't hear me, I'd rather die because life has no purpose, no meaning if you don't answer me. While I was still saying, Oh God, I can't pray anymore, I remembered the words in the Bible. I, I, I had no Bible in the prison, it was forbidden. The words where Jesus said, When you pray, say, 
and I began hesitantly to say those words, Our Father. But as I did, I began to argue. I, I can't say our, that's plural, but I'm alone in here. No family, no friends, no believers. How can I speak in the plural? I have to say my father. Suddenly I knew the reality of those words. He's mine. He's my father and he's mine. Then I came to the next part, who is in heaven. Then again I argued with God, yes, you're in heaven, but I'm in a stinking, filthy cell. Don't you understand? Joy, happiness, glory, that's in heaven, but I'm down here. And then I remembered the truth. You sent your son, you only had one son, and you sent him down to this earth. He was in a prison cell like me. Yes, God was willing not only to let his son die, death is easy, but he was beaten and tortured. Why? Because God loved me. He allowed his son to suffer for me. How could I complain? And then I realized, God is not just in heaven. He's here in this prison cell with me. Suddenly, the glory of that revelation flooded my soul. And I began to understand who God is. Then came the next part, hallowed be your name. I questioned, what does this really mean? Surely this is the moment when we must worship him. And how can I worship God in this cell? My mouth was closed and I was trying to praise God through clenched teeth because of my suffering and pain. Suddenly, my heart opened and a miracle happened. It was as if heaven had opened. The cell was filled with a brilliant light. All the angels of heaven seemed to crowd into that cell. I began to praise and worship the Lord. I got to my feet and began to run around that tiny cell, two meters by four, singing, Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee how great thou art. The glory of God filled my heart, changing me. The sadness and the pain were gone. I was locked in a prison cell, yet I was in the presence of God, experiencing the glory of God, something greater than I'd ever known in a church. It was as if I was transported into heaven. I made so much noise. The guards came running to see what was happening. But the glory of God was so great they didn't even enter the cell. From that moment, everything changed. God began to answer every prayer. I got food to eat. God showed me the day I would get out, my birthday, and that I would be speaking in the biggest auditorium in Britain, sharing the joy of the miracle of answered prayer. I did get out, exactly as God showed me on my birthday. The British Prime Minister came to Czechoslovakia. They set me free at his request. I flew back into London with him. It was all over the newspapers on television. I was asked to speak to thousands in the Royal Albert Hall in London three days later. Everybody asked, why did the British Prime Minister come to the rescue of a Christian believer? I'll tell you, it's because God is a God of power, of glory and of miracles. He is a prayer answering God. We can all have this relationship with God. If you are sick or crippled, in despair, alone, whoever you are, wherever you are, God will hear you. God will answer your prayer like he answered mine. That miracle was so big because of the media publicity, it changed my life. I was asked to travel all over the world. People wanted to know my story because I have a God who answers prayer. I know how to worship him, how to praise him. I've never been the same because of that experience. It's not about religion. It's not about ceremony. In that prison, I found a new reality, a new relationship with him. I know my God is alive every day. Every morning I got out of bed, Jesus is alive. Good morning, Jesus. The trouble is, so many people know the Lord's Prayer. They can say the prayer, they can sing it, they can say it backwards, but don't know the reality. I want you to read Luke 11, because Jesus did not end with the Amen of the prayer, but actually continued. 
Which of you has a friend? And go to him at midnight, say, Friend, lend me three loaves, because a friend of mine has come, and I've no food in my house to give him. Jesus is still talking about prayer. Jesus says, You've no food. You go to your neighbor, you bang on the door. The neighbor says, Go away, it's late. The children are asleep. Go away, you'll wake the baby. But you keep on banging. And the more you knock, the more your neighbor says, Go away. Then Jesus says, Eventually, because you keep on knocking, your neighbor will get out of bed and give you one, not because you are a friend, but because you make so much noise in asking, because he can't keep you quiet. Jesus said to you, Ask, and it will be given. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened. I want to show you the greatest lesson in prayer. Don't take no for an answer. Keep on calling to God. Keep asking. He will answer you. Our God is a prayer answering God. Don't take no for an answer. Keep on asking. God will give you what you need. That applies to sickness, to every problem in your life. Why did I come out of that prison? I wasn't there 10 years or 5 years. I was only there one year. Everybody was amazed. Everybody in the prison gathered around me. Why are you being set free? I told them because I have a God who answers prayer, a God who delivers. I want you to know the Lord like I do, so that when you call on Him, He will answer. Thirty-five years later, I still have contact with some of those prisoners. They're still going on with God. Why? They saw the reality that my God is alive and answers prayer. You keep on asking. He's not just a God in heaven, but a God with you here on earth, even in a prison cell, or in your pain and suffering, just where you are. When I am weak, you make me strong. Thank you for listening to The Power of Faith, broadcast with David Hathaway. We would love to hear from you. Contact us by visiting www.eurovision.org.uk. Also available online are a large assortment of videos, magazines and books for your growth in God. We would like to give all new subscribers to David's ministry a free gift. To receive your free gift, visit www.eurovisiontv.org. Remember, those who know their God will be strong and do exploits. Worship used by kind permission of Vinesong, www.vinesong.com.